Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Sarge Going Deep by Stuart Ledwith, PhD. And this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Prologue. The front page of the Times was filled with pictures of an alien spaceship on a U.S. Air aircraft carrier. The headline read, Admiral Patrick James abducted by aliens taken from the flight deck of a U.S. aircraft carrier in the Atlantic. The pictures below have been relayed to you, us via messenger, and the only accounts we have are from sailors who witnessed the abduction. We do know that a full-scale search has begun by all our military branches of service and those of all friendly nations. When we are allowed to send reporters to the carrier, we will bring more details. This is a very serious offense, and we are on alert, level orange, and if more sightings around the carrier happen, it will rise to level red. Chapter 1. As they descended the escalator from their customs check, June noticed the sign with Manganero in neon blue capital letters. She pointed it out to Joe, who was still holding the handrail to steady himself. It was their tour guides waiting for them. Sarge had hired Bill and George to take this special couple on an around-the-world tour, and this was the first of many, many stops. This plan had been in the works for many months, yet was only revealed to June and Joe in the last two weeks. Of course, their daughters Cora and Liv were in on the planning with Sarge. Following the introductions, the four of them headed to the limo. Bill's first question was to clarify if June wanted to be referred to as June, her work pseudonym, or her given name, Chloe. She turned and looked deep into Joe's eyes to read his choice, and it was clearly Chloe. Since she was not at work, it would be delightful to be called Chloe once again. Since Sarge would only have it be first class all the way for them, a champagne toast in the limo led to the revelation about all that was to happen in the next few days. It included both fine restaurants and beach bars, walks on secluded beaches, snorkeling, touring the markets, rest stops for Joe so as not to overtax his energy levels, though he would never admit that he needed to use them. It would be a delightful few days or longer if Joe and June wanted to stay and enjoy the wonderful weather and sea breezes. First stop was the hotel to drop off all their luggage. Chloe's first task was to have Joe sit on the balcony overlooking the sea and relax. Joe, I'm going downstairs for a few minutes and we'll be right back. I have a surprise planned for you. She spoke in calming tones to set the mood for him as she took him by the arm to escort him to one of the tall wicker chairs outside the main suite. Chloe walked up to the concierge and asked for directions to the beauty salon. Not only did he give her directions, he escorted her and asked for her to be taken care of immediately. Chloe described to the technician exactly what she wanted. When she was satisfied, she returned to the suite. Okay, Joe, what do you think? She asked as she stood in front of him to model her hairdo. Joe rose a bit unsteadily from his chair. Tears formed and dripped down his cheeks. He remembered that time in the bar where he had seen her when he was in college and before that, that girl who came to his games whom he always saw in the stands. There she was again, that smile, that sweet curl that wrapped around the bottom of her chin. There was that girl he promised himself he would marry someday. He reached out to her and pulled her close. They kissed a long, beautiful kiss, redeeming an old high school memory and brought it into their present reality. Such a beautiful memory to hold on to. Such a memory to retrieve. The first of many, or so he hoped. Chloe held his hands and looked deep into his dreamy eyes and spoke softly. It is so beautiful here, Joe. Let's walk down to the beach and grab a bite to eat. I'd like that, Joe cooed close to her ear. Then let's get properly dressed, good sir, Chloe said in mock haughtiness, trying to fit their posh surroundings. Chloe went to the overly decorated British armoire from the early 1800s and looked through the contents. Bill and George had done a fine job of shopping. Chloe was told she'd not need to bring much, and this cash told her they were correct. She found Bermuda shorts and a tropical shirt for Joe and decided to wear her cute yellow bikini and found a light yellow cover-up in the armoire to match it. This was just fun, and as Sarge had promised, it would certainly be a trip of a lifetime. The concierge met them as they walked arm in arm through the lobby. He said lunch would be waiting for them after their walk on the beach. The Cabana restaurant on the, dip on the beach would be expecting them. <laughs>